With a 7-5 win over the Kansas City Royals, your Seattle Mariners are in first place in the American League West. Ben Ranieri of Sea level and I will break down the game coming up here on the Locked On Mariners postgame show. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Ahoy, sailors. It is Friday, August 25th, 2023. This is Tiding Gonzalez and Ben Ranieri for the Locked On Mariners postgame show brought to you by Sleeper. Swing for the fences on Sleeper picks and you can win up to 100 times your money. Download the Sleeper app and use promo code Locked On. That's L O C K D O N. You'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. Thank you so much for making us your first listen after the game. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube, or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you're part of the crew and rock with us every single day, let us know in the comments below. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. You can now get a free seven-day trial to check out the show. The link, as well as our social accounts, is in the description of this episode. Seven to five, the final score from T-Mobile Park. The Mariners survive yet another nail-biter against the Royals, and with this win, Mariners are now tied with the Texas Rangers for first place in the American League West. This is the latest they've been in first place since all the way back in 2003, folks. It was a long time ago. Pretty incredible stuff. Ben, I want to thank you for hopping on here on such short notice with Colby out of town. It, uh, it wasn't pretty, but the boys got the job done tonight. How you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Thanks for having me. Um, everything just continues to kind of come up Mariners. It it felt good, yeah. obviously, from the opening pitch, JP jumping on it. Um, love to see him kind of get back in the, the swing of things and kind of be a tone setter for this offense that just continues to roll, even when the pitching staff is kind of questionable. Thank you, Driveline. Thank you, thank yes. you, thank you yes. so much. Those are our guys. Uh, shout out. <laughs> shout out, shout out. Uh, I believe that was the longest home run of JP Crawford's career. Yep. Correct. Wow. Yep. That is that's nuts. I mean, felt like the juice balls were uh were present tonight, you know. Apple TV game, Friday night, you know, looking mm-hmm. good in the city connects. Seemed like, you know, uh, we were we were trying to get some offense going there. Uh yeah, and uh, the Apple TV balls were were certainly in play, especially yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Josh Rojas had almost like three home runs and, and one at bat. So, uh, yep. yeah, they were and got them. zero out of them, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Kyle Isbell is a war criminal and uh, he should be charged for his uh, for his crimes uh, against the Seattle Mariners tonight. Uh, yeah. Thankfully, the Mariners were able to get yet another wild game against the Kansas City Royals. Andres Munoz had a. Uh, an interesting ninth inning, we'll say uh, another one, but this time at least kept the Royals off the board. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on him real quick because obviously he's been the story of the last couple of days with uh, what happened on Wednesday in Chicago. Uh, what did you think about him tonight? He had the couple of walks. I mean, one of them was an intentional walk, but uh, he also had the uh, uh, he gave up a hit, load, loaded up the bases. Uh, it was it was an adventure, right? It was an Andres Munoz as of late. Uh, type of outing so what did you think yeah man i think it's just a he just is struggling so hard in those those leverage counts those o2 counts those one two counts um i mean it just comes down to the slider he needs the slider and yeah. for a late inning reliever like you need that confidence uh the guy that we saw last year that was just i mean we all have the same confidence that it looked like he had when he took the mound it's just like this guy's gonna throw a scoreless frame every single time um mm-hmm. and he just doesn't quite have that right now just a lot of and it doesn't help when you're going deep in counts and um these long 25 to 30 pitch outings for him and brash like yeah that they're just gonna wear down at some point and i think that's kind of what we're seeing yeah uh we also saw matt brash in this game for the first time in a little while uh he gives up a two-run home run to kyle isbell of course uh <laughs> course right Kyle Isbell of all people he he had like three incredible catches within the first three innings of this game he has a two-run home run I'm over Kyle Isbell I'll just I'll just say that um yeah so uh what did you think about Brash tonight just kind of the same thing I mean 
he's given up t- three home runs in his career as a reliever. Two of them mm. are to the Royals. I think two of them are in the last two weeks. Um, he just, I don't know. I mean, judging by the comments from Scott Service and some of the reporting around him, it seems like he's feeling some arm fatigue. I mean, velocity was there. I didn't think the slider looked as sharp tonight. Um but I think it just with the Royals in general, they're just kind of an interesting matchup because they just don't swing and miss. Um, yeah, they don't. It's annoying. Even off of Brash, like it was another long inning and it just looks like those guys are fatigued. So um, whatever they need to do to kind of reshuffle this thing, if they need to kind of put Brash maybe back into this old role and kind of move Topa into – his current role or, or whatever it may be. I think they just need to figure out how to take some, some pressure off of him, but I thought he was okay. Uh, velocity was there, but yeah, just looks like he's kind of wearing down to me. Uh, the bullpen overall had to take on five innings of work in this game. Uh, Bryce Miller only able to go through the first four. He was really good in the first inning. And then after that, just kind of lost control. Uh, six strikeouts, one walk, uh, three earned runs, all coming in the second inning off of uh, six hits, five hard hit balls on the night in total. Uh, what did you uh, What did you make of his night tonight? Because again, like it started out so well, it looked like we were going to get a really nice start out of Bryce, and then all of a sudden, just the wheels kind of came off. Yeah, that first inning was was so encouraging. The velocity was up, and it's just kind of the thing for Bryce Miller and his. In his bad starts, I feel like he just doesn't get as many whiffs. Mm-hmm. Um, he just he'll miss in the middle of the play with the slider, and he just again it, some of it you got to give credit to the Royals. Every once in a while, you just got to tip your cap. Like that team doesn't swing and miss very much. Um, yeah, those at bats were super long. It's hard to throw thirty to forty pitches in an inning. Um, I didn't think he was terrible, but if you throw thirty pitches in the second inning, like it's probably going to cut your your night pretty short especially for a guy who they're trying to limit his his innings a little bit and his exposure so i didn't yeah. think he was incredibly sharp um but he had a couple of good innings mixed in there with some good velo it's just that roller coaster of velo for bryce miller just kind of kind of continues yeah and i want to tip my cap here to scott service for you know looking at what miller was tonight and going you know what let's not push it Let's go to the bullpen here. Let's try to to salvage this game and and not try and uh, force the issue here with Miller and try to force another you know three or so outs out of him for really no good reason. And the uh, the bullpen for the most part came through aside from the uh, the two run homer uh, off of uh, off of Brash from Isbell. So uh, overall, good night. Um, you know, on the pitching side, even you know giving up five runs against this uh, this team, it's still a pretty solid night for what this bullpen do and then you know a couple of those innings from miller as well like you mentioned were uh were nice but uh obviously would like him to get deeper into the game because this bullpen has obviously taken on a lot of work uh especially as of late and so any sort of reprieve that they can get would be nice but yeah um we'll see what that means for the rest of this series uh so we're going to turn our attention to the offense and then we're going to talk about what happened around the league Uh, tonight in just a moment but first a reminder this episode of the locked on marriage podcast is brought to you by sleeper want the chance to win more money with less picks head on over to sleeper where you can win up to 100 times your money on just two or more fantasy baseball picks all you have to do is choose two or more players that you like and select more or less on their stats like home runs strikeouts hits and more get your picks right and you can win big Making your picks is easy and takes only 30 seconds or less and if you win you can draw your payout safe and quickly Use promo code locked on. That's L O C K D O N. You'll get up to $100 matched on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. See Sleeper's terms of use for details. Currently operational in over 30 states. Check out Sleeper today. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners 7 to 5 win over the Kansas City Royals at T Mobile Park. You can catch game two of the series on the Mariners hometown broadcast, Sirius XM via the SXM app. As always, check it out. And with that win, the Mariners are tied with the Texas Rangers for first place in the American League West. How about that, folks? How about that? I'm here with Ben Ranieri of the C-Level Substack. 
Uh, you guys might know Ben. He was on here once after the uh, Luis Castillo extension all the way back last year. This has been well overdue getting him back on the show. Uh, ben, before we uh, continue talking about this game, tell the fine folks where they can find your work. Yeah, so you can follow me on Twitter at BenRenary10. Um, and you can go subscribe to my Substack at sealevelbr.com. Um, you can subscribe for free. I do a bunch of, I'll do a podcast on there that are free that show up every once in a while. Um, I do some free columns as well. Um, but other than that, if you want to support, you can do a, a monthly or a yearly, or, um, if you're feeling generous, uh, an MVP subscription. So yeah, go ahead and go check that out. Yeah, do it. Do it for sure. Ben has dope content over there. He's interviewing guys. He's got great insight on the team. Check it out. You definitely want to give him a follow over on Twitter. Check out his sub stack for sure. All right, so Ben, uh, this offense uh, went off tonight. I mean, they only scored seven runs. And when I say only, I mean, that's because they had 16 hits in this game. They had three guys with three hits on the night. Uh, they also had two guys with two hits on the night. Uh, they had a lot of traffic on the base pass. They end up finishing five for 15 with runners in scoring position. And that's fine. Overall, uh, 10 men left on base. Uh, you can live with that, but they definitely missed out on some opportunities. What did you think about the offense overall tonight? Yeah. I mean, they, they didn't get a ton out of like guys like Julio or Ty France tonight, but I think tonight just showcases how important it is to get JP Crawford back. Mm -hmm. um three hits shout out to my guy tanner stokey over at driveline um jp with the leadoff bomb you you love to see him kind of getting back in the groove because for those that that haven't gone through this like i had a concussion in college as a player it's as a hitter specifically it can be really really hard so it's yeah. really really good to see jp um kind of getting back into form and then my guy gino um just a, a really big night and he has, he's kind of struggled and I'm sure he's a little bit frustrated with the lack of kind of over the fence power, but man, he's come up big in some situations recently mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. Um, and then other than those two guys, those two guys are kind of their two of their emotional leaders um, in the clubhouse, but you kind of got to give a shout out to Jerry DePoto once again with the Dominic Canzone and, and Josh Rojas. Those two guys just continue to, They've added this nice balance to the lineup with a couple left-handed sticks that both of those guys seem like they're kind of coming into their own. I know Rojas, if you listen to his interviews this week um, on 710, he's kind of been making some adjustments. He made some adjustments like right before he was traded over, um, mm -hmm. and they're certainly paying off. Both of those guys, I really like the way they're swinging it, um, and you have to be excited that you're going to have those guys for years to come now. Yeah, we, we talked about this during our uh, prospect re-rank episode earlier today with Canzone. It's really the most impressive thing with uh, for me with Canzone is the plate coverage. Right? He gets to a lot of pitches, and he's able to foul off a lot of pitches that he really just shouldn't be. He shouldn't be getting to some of those. And uh, yeah, he's going to be a good player, man. I, I think the, you know, I said today, I think the athleticism aspect is a little overblown, but overall, like, I, I think he's a, a good player. And you know, Rojas again tonight, three hard hit balls. Like he's on another level right now. Uh so yeah, it looks like whatever changes he's made, those are working and he needs to stick with that. So yeah, good night overall for the offense. Um, gets the job done and most importantly, got that insurance run in the uh in the bottom of the eighth, which was huge, right? The the Royals didn't end up scoring in the top of the ninth, but I definitely felt a lot better about things, especially when it was second and third. And when that all right, it's at least tied if they, yeah. you know, park a ball in the gap here or something, you know, it, it's yeah. Um so that was that was good. Uh good night overall for the offense. Um all right, so Ben, the first place Seattle Mariners. The first place Seattle Mariners. It is August 25th. Well, now August 26th here in my neck of the woods. Yeah. Uh, it is, for those listening or watching right now, it is 2.40 in the morning. The <laughs> things I do for you guys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, your first place Seattle Mariners. How does that sound? It feels good, man. It's It's been a long time coming. Um, I tweeted this out earlier, but it's really, really cool to see 
I've been saying for years now that Seattle's a it's a sleeping baseball giant. Like they've been mm-hmm. waiting for this, and it was so cool to see a sellout this late in the year. Um, especially for any of us that have followed this team for 10, 15, 20 years, like to have a sellout this late in the year, for it to be that meaningful and to jump into first place. Um, especially with the the mountain and the deficit that they've had to overcome, it's just it feels really good feels really good to be able to say first place i i can't believe we're in this spot i can't (laughs) i can't you know covering this team every single day i mean a lot of the days kind of blur into you know one but uh and and i kind of like i'll admit it i probably have forgotten a lot that's happened during this season because so much has happened and it really has been a tale of of two seasons right i mean what is going on with this team right now and yeah the the schedule has lightened up a lot as of late but what they've been able to accomplish is nothing short of remarkable. I mean, it's it's incredible what we're seeing. I mean, this is quite frankly an even more insane run than anything they went on last year. Like even the 14 game win streak. Like what they're doing right now is I've we don't really see this. <laughs> we really don't see this ever. I mean, they're breaking records, they're doing things that haven't been done in like 30 years, like with the, you know, two eight game win streaks in the month of August, like it's insane. No. And the other thing that I was thinking about today, it's easy to forget that this is now three years in a row that they've done this. I mean, yeah. obviously it didn't go their way in 2021, but it's three years in a row where they've been essentially middling until the middle of July. And then I've just been like, yep, it's time to play baseball now. And I've yeah. just turned it on. Like, uh, I don't know. Well, and, I, I and for this, like we just can't well, have any early season freakouts anymore. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and and for this to also coincide with the Rangers losing eight in a row, I mean, the time like it feels like there is a higher power that is controlling <laughs> things here. The baseball gods, if you will, are Mariners fans this year, right? Like it just it kind of feels that way, especially with what happened. Tonight, you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the 7-5 to win over the Kansas City Royals. Again, you can catch Game 2 of the series on the Mariners Hometown broadcast tomorrow night uh, with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Uh, yeah, so what happened ar- around the league uh, was pretty awesome as well tonight. The Astros were no-hitting the Detroit Tigers through 7. They were up one to nothing, And then they messed around, and Parker Meadows walk yeah. them off three I got, a confession. I got a confession to make about that um, all right i actually watched that entire game mm-hmm. until there was two outs in the ninth and miggy was up and i was kind of like ah ryan presley miggy um and then all of a sudden like probably like seven or eight minutes later i get a tweet notification from ryan divish that parker meadows had walked him off so a uh, pretty good start to the night there yeah but yeah watched uh 26 out to that and then yeah good good finish there <laughs> the uh the, the ben jinx right there's the yes. colby jinx there's the ty jinx now there's the ben jinx uh <laughs> then on, good one. yeah hopefully i mean so far so good right <laughs> uh so after that rangers got dog walked by the uh by the minnesota twins which is awesome so again they've lost eight in a row now they're in a dark spot right now which finally right i mean like look i think they're a good team i was wrong about them before the season i thought that they weren't going to be anywhere close to to this you know i didn't think that they were even going to sniff the postseason still Uh, i still felt like they were at least a year away um so i was wrong about that but what they've been doing this year like too many things have been going well for them i mean travis jankowski for pete's sake is like a 120 wrc plus guy this year like dude what what's going on like there's like some crazy voodoo going on down there i know that the injuries have started to mount up for them but also like some of their guys are starting to regress the pitching starting to regress a little bit you know guys that have just gone on to have career years this year they're finally kind of coming back down to earth so that's nice to see because i'm just like dude when is when is this gonna give when is this gonna give him so finally that's happening uh and the Blue Jays also lost tonight to the uh, Cleveland Guardians in Toronto. Uh, and they're kind of stumbling a little bit right now. Uh, but they are also going to hit their 
by far their easiest part of their schedule uh, coming up here. They uh, they are going to play the Nationals, who are hotter lately. They they've been, I think, one of the six or seven best teams in baseball since the All Star break, or maybe even before then. Uh, so that's not going to be necessarily a walk in the park, but they should be able to handle the Nationals. Uh, they got the A's. I think they have the Rockies. They have a couple of fairly easy teams coming up. So I'm sure that they're going to be able to stack up some wins here. But now you're putting a little bit of a cu- uh, cushion between you and the Blue Jays. And obviously, you're not the first team or the last team in right now. That's the Astros. So more so Houston has to worry about Toronto right now. But still, it's it's nice to see because now it's they're up two games, but it's technically three because they're going to have the tiebreaker over them because of the interdivisional record. Uh, so, yeah, what, what do you think about all this that's going on right now? What do you think about the, the, the standings of the race right now? Yeah, I find it pretty hard to believe that this isn't going to come down to that last week. Yeah. Um, to me, it's just you're hot right now. Stack as many wins as you can in these next – well, you got the, two more with the Royals, then three with the A's, and then the Mets. Um, yeah, I think it's so Mets, Rays, uh, yeah, Reds. So three last yeah. place teams, and then the Rays kind of had their number for a little while, um, and then the Reds. So I think it's just kind of how many wins can you stack before you get to the the really yeah. tough part of the schedule. And, I mean, I think they play the Angels one more time. Yeah. Obviously, we know what's going on with them. Um, but they're always kind of pesky. Um, and so, yeah, it's just kind of how many wins can you stack over the next couple of weeks and try to build that cushion, like you said. Yeah, yeah, they, they have to do it, right? Because we've talked about on this show that they're going to have a bad series. Right? They're the hottest team in baseball right now, but they're going to have a bad series. It's just baseball. That's the way that it goes. Uh, it doesn't really mean anything in one direction or the other. It's just, you know, it's going to happen. And, you know, like you mentioned, right, they're going to play the Rays. They're going to play the Dodgers. They're going to play, you know, obviously they got the, couple of series against you know texas and then obviously the one against houston at the end of the season i mean playoff baseball for the mariners is going to start on what september 22nd september 23rd whenever that first of those three series begins um but yeah you know we we talked about this colby and i talked about this a little bit on our patreon yesterday uh but i also want to you know get your thoughts on this here and and just kind of talk about this a little bit before we wrap things up uh i think it's crucial for this team to win the division Uh, because of, again, how early they're going to start playing playoff baseball. It would be nice to get those three to four days off after all of that madness to kind of recharge and get ready for the actual postseason uh, and also be able to host some playoff games to start things off here as well. Um, So, you know, how how do you think this is all going to, you know, finish out? Oh, man. I don't know. I think, I mean, I think winning division is obviously the ultimate goal. Like, it's yeah. the Jay Buhner thing. Um, forget the wild card, go win the division. Like, that's what you want to do. Um, that'd mm-hmm. be a huge milestone for this team and this franchise. Um, I don't know. To me, preseason, I thought it was the Astros. It's it's still hard for me to believe that they won't win the division. That It seems like a really good team, but they're just, they're not playing well right now. Um no. So, I mean, it's going to come down to those last few games or those last few series, like I said. Um, But, I mean, I think it's just get in the dance and then let your pitching do the work. Yeah. Um, If they can get in the dance, I think they they have as good a shot of anybody. Um, I think Wild Card 3 would be playing against Minnesota, who I know is an excellent matchup for the Mariners Mm. um, with all those left-handed hitters and, and stuff like that. But. I mean that's not a bad matchup either, but yeah, you certainly want to win the division and and hopefully they could pull it off. Yeah, because I mean you don't even have to play in that series because look, the the yeah. Twins aren't going to finish better than you. You're going to get one of the buys yeah. if you if you win the division. So yeah, being able to just avoid the wild card series entirely would be, be awesome. massive. That would be massive. Obviously, you want to put a banner up in the in the right field, you know, stands, but also would like to have those few days off after you go through that gauntlet to end the season. So 
we'll see how it goes but we're, we're looking very far in the future we got to take this one day yep. at a time ben stack we, as we, many wins as you can the next tomorrow is a championship opportunity Ben. i don't know if you know that but it is a championship opportunity we got to take it one day at a time we are still on to kansas city right now so see how these next two games go uh tomorrow if they went i don't think we're going to be doing a post game but maybe sunday if they went i think ben and i will uh get back on here maybe colby as well he said that he would be back in town around the afternoon on sunday so we'll see about that but uh ben and i will definitely uh be on here sunday if uh if the mariners beat the uh the royals so uh yeah keep an eye out for that uh again ben let them know where they can find you real quick before we get out of here yeah, follow me on Twitter at Ben Ranieri ten. Um, go subscribe to Sea Level. It's uh it's in the link in my bio. Um, you can just look it up at SeaLevelBR.com. dot com. Um, yeah, go ahead and subscribe. It's free to subscribe, or if you want to upgrade, that's totally cool too. That's gonna do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Locked On Mariners post game show for Ben Ranieri. I'm Tiny Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at lo underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez. That's D A N E G N Z L Z. You can follow my co-host Colby Patnode over at CPAT11. That's CPAT11. You can also follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well over at Locked On Mariners. That's one word, Locked On Mariners. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. Thank you again for making us your first listen after the Mariners 7-5 to win over the Kansas City Royals. You can catch Game 2 of this series on the Mariners Hometown Broadcast with SiriusXM via the SXM app. Have yourself a beautiful baseball evening, and we'll see you next time. Peace.